Hey guys, welcome back. We're back on the Tomb of Lisa, and today it's done. Well, mostly. We still got to do paint and stuff, but it's mostly done. Just do a little uh, circle around here so you guys can see what we got. And we're going to go over everything we did to get to this point. Everything is constructed and glued together, and everything's working too. How about that? <laughs> All right, so the last time we talked, we covered the cowl and how we constructed it. Now, everything here has been painted with just simple spray paint, uh, light coats. Okay, light coats are your friend. This is two light coats of a khaki. It's a camouflage khaki I got at uh, Lowe's. Spray paint, no surface prep at all because I'm using just the standard uh, ready board, white ready board straight out of the case. So uh, no waterproofing or anything, but um, seems to be holding just fine. Now, um, landing gear. Okay, so the landing gear is pr actually straightforward. It's really quite simple. The, uh, the plans come with templates that you just bend the wire to. Okay, so this is one eighth inch wire I picked up at Home Depot. Uh, it was $3.50 for a four foot length. Now, a four foot length will give you, well, on this particular case, it got me everything except for the, uh, the main axle. So all, all, of the, uh, all of the wire for the structure was done off of one piece. So I needed to, um, if this is your first time doing this, buy double what you need. So buy four, <laughs> because you will mess up. Uh, the reason that I say that is because I mess up. Um, the reason that you're going to mess up is when you make the bends, uh, you, you sort of bend it in a circle, right? And having a vise, having a vise helps a whole lot because you can stick it in the vise and then heat it up with like, you can use a big blowtorch hiding back there, but I use a, a little butane pen torch to heat it up in the vise because if you do it cold it's more than likely going to break so you heat it up again i counted for 15 seconds with that little torch it doesn't take much it doesn't have to be red hot it just has to get some heat in it so it doesn't crack so then you bend it and you do that with a hammer so that you're not you know bowing it. you're bending it right at the point so once you have the bend done, you do a little bit at a time, okay? So you do it most of the way there, take it out, hold it over your plan, see if you need to adjust it further, put it back in real quick, and you don't, I didn't have to heat much in between. If you don't get the bends right on each side, you end up having lopsided gear. So that's what I mean. Like you, you have to learn your own technique for where you're gonna mark with your marker and where you put it in the vise to create your radius. So different people use different techniques. I'm not gonna tell you specifics because I want you guys to try it for yourselves and learn how to do it yourselves because that's the way you'll remember it forever. Not by hearing some idiot ramble on about it and this is how you have to, anyway. So that's how we get the landing gear pieces. So we have this piece that guns from here down here, over here, and up here. And again, these are being held on with, it's uh, it's like hold down thing with, uh, a, this is plastic. I got this at the Home Depot. Comes with a nail in it, pulled the nail out, grabbed a couple screws from the spare screw drawer, and that's on the popsicle stick, right? So pilot drill a hole, put a screw in, add some thin CA, hardens it right up, and it holds just fine, and it's super sturdy. All right, so there's a back one and then there's another front one and it's exactly the same. And I wanted to make sure that you guys saw that this is more ruler material. All right, so the plans called for this to actually be inside here. And then this was to be divided in half and then you put it in here and epoxy it in place. And then you put this over. 
too complicated, too complicated. So what I did was I just moved it to this side of the firewall because I knew there was room and that would rake the gear forward ever so slightly, which is not a bad thing on these models since they're so nose heavy anyway. So what that also does is keep my firewall unobstructed for mounting the battery here too. Okay, smart, think ahead. So this is just CA'd together and then CA'd to that piece of ply for the firewall. And it, it's, it's super strong, super strong. Perfectly strong enough for what we're doing here. All right, so moving back to landing gear. Um, first thing I did was I took thread and this is just cheap, cheap, 100% uh, polyester. See, 100% polyester thread. All right, it's nothing fancy. It's just black. It was spare in our thread cubby and yeah, cheap. I wrapped a whole bunch around both of these, just the two, okay? And then I wrapped thread around each end with the bottom piece, okay? So the way this suspension works is that's flexi, right? So it's shock absorbing. So with these three wrapped around with the thread, then I took thin CA, which is that pink bottle. Hello, thin CA. And with the thin CA, I put drops of it on this thread and it hardens up like a rock. And the, the landing gear is not going anywhere. Now I did all of this with the axle in place and these uh, hair ties, seriously, hair ties from the drugstore. Uh, I think these were $2 for all of these. Anyway, so I've got one hair tie here, one hair tie there. So I did one side at a time, and that was before I put this centerpiece with the uh, threads wrapped around. And that centerpiece helps keep the axle centered, but also after adding these collets, these inner collets, that helps keep the axle centered too. Um, and then that also helps keep things rolling freely for the wheels and everything is just great for this. Okay, so again, just a hair tie as a bungee cord and that's gonna be absolutely perfect for absorbing shock, as well as, you know, the little bit of squish that we get from the TPU of the 3D print, okay? These are not hard techniques. It looks hard because it's all assembled. If you take one thing at a time and do it methodically, it's just a series of steps. It's no more difficult than building with Legos, okay? Really common materials, really cheap materials. That whole landing gear apparatus was like all less than $10. And you've got loads to spare, loads to spare. $7 for the wire, $2 for the, for the hair ties. You probably could buy a, a smaller pack that has like half as much for half as much money. And then, you know, a, a dollar for a spool of thread and some CA that you've already got in your shop. I mean, it's, it's, it's so cheap, 10 bucks for that. And it looks scale and it's gonna be super robust for these foam models, okay? It's worth taking time to learn these techniques because you can use them over and over again, right? Give it a try and it's, it's not as daunting as you think, I promise. There's a learning curve, but there's a learning curve with everything. Remember the first time you built that foam board model and how you kept on nicking the hinge line with your knife? It's the same thing, you're gonna screw up. It's okay, these are cheap materials. Just keep going, press forward, and it'll be fine, it'll be fine. All right, so from there, after I had the landing gear mounted, I went ahead and I just glued on the cowl. Uh, the cowl fit on perfectly with the wood positioned here. I, I mean, it's not rocket science, it's just hot glue. And from there, what I did was I glued on the top wing, uh, one side at a time. The glue is kind of smudgy because I did it with the airplane uh, turn flipped over. Let me let, let me flip that over real quick. All right, that looks a little bit better, right? 
Okay, so with the airplane in this position, I glued on one side at a time. I forget which one I did first, but uh, that allowed me to just help keep things center because the top wing is honestly the stronger, honestly, because of the spar piece. Remember that? Remember that? Yeah. So then after that, I glued in the inner plane struts just to the top wing. And then I flipped the airplane back over. So now I'm going to flip the airplane back over. And with the airplane flipped back over, I removed my hold downs. These plastic hold downs, remember these? I removed those so that I could pivot the landing gear up and get the foam strut positioned into the slots there. There is a good angle. Okay, so I got these in there. And everything was a little flippy and floppy, a little you know flimsy, but with the airplane on the table, everything was situated just fine. Okay, so I roughly positioned these, these roots in place, and then I went and positioned each of the inner plane strut connections with hot glue. Okay, so those set perfectly because everything's at an angle already anyway. Then came the tricky part. I had to match the incidence here that's here. Now incidence, what's incidence? Incidence is the angle of the wing related to the fuselage. So there's one for the top wing and the bottom wing in this particular model should match. Sometimes they're different make sure you check your plans okay make sure you check your instructions sometimes it's in there too so i have an angle finder you can use that you can use a bubble so using using a standard bubble uh angle meter you can use a phone most phone uh have an angle thing in it anyway so you can use that and just check it here and then position the phone here and then check the angle there and that way you get everything matched at the same angle from there you can check the outer uh, if you want to it's pretty much set in stone mine was off by 0 0.2 0 0.3 degrees uh, not a huge deal enough that i could easily trim it out but again foam board model foam board model not going for super precise here because you've got limited amount of time working with a hot glue anyway so once I got those right, I used glue, I smeared it around to get these uh, angles right. Uh, and then I added just a drop of glue to hold the aileron servo wire in place and grabbed some extensions and got it connected to the receiver. So from there, it's just a simple rudimentary check your weight. Okay, so where do we end up with the weight on this airplane? <laughs> cool part is my original one was way overweight um, because I put all the details in it and I didn't know anything about building light or anything like that. So the center of gravity on this foam board version, it's dead on uh, using a 5800 three cell pack right at the firewall. CG does not need to be changed at all after that. So the all up weight, eh, that's the tricky part. The specified all up weight for this model from Aerodrome RC was 54 ounces. 54 ounces. <laughs> yeah, the foam board version came out at 54 ounces exactly with that big, big battery. And I'm, I'm ecstatic with that. It should fly great. Um, I think that uh, with having the landing gear raked forward ever so slightly, the the tracking might be a little bit better. Um, but we'll see, we'll see. Uh, the center of gravity is critical on these airplanes and best rule of thumb is straight up from the leading edge of the bottom wing. But um, so there's, uh, there's complicated ways to calculate CG for these biplanes, but that's the easy one. Now I've done the calculated complicated version and they're really, really close every single time I've done a biplane and you can do it both ways and it should work fine for you. Now, that being said, um, got to talk about differential. Okay. So differential is where you have the aileron 
and it goes down further than it goes up. Okay, so the reason why you would want differential, um, mostly it's because of yaw. So when on these airplanes you have a roll situation, they will tend, because of the drag on one wing, they will tend to want to yaw as they roll. So rather than just rolling, they will yaw and roll. So when you go like this, the, the tail will kind of swoop around and it'll look kind of fuzzy. So if you add differential, you get more of an axial roll. So it helps with more precise flying and controllability because sometimes you can get into stall situations with different angles of attack on your roll. Uh, especially if you have like a tailwind, if you're making a turn with a tailwind, um, that can really screw with you a little bit. So I highly recommend differential. Lots of different radio manufacturers go about it a different way. So read up on your particular manufacturer. I usually go with around 30% uh, differential. Uh, some radios like if in, so the way that you have to do differential is you have to have each aileron on an independent channel. So this is a five channel airplane because I have two channels for independent ailerons. So you can try to, yeah, yeah I, I don't know how you do it any other way because if you do it in a Y, if one aileron's only going down partially the other one's going to go down go up partially there are mechanical ways to do it but there can be kind of tricky it's just easier to use a six channel receiver and have a dead channel and uh use use differential in your radio it's just easier to program than do the mechanical way in my opinion that's my opinion uh, anyway, so I highly recommend that for these kinds of World War I style airplanes, especially when you only have ailerons on the bottom wing or only on the top wing. If you've got it on all four wings, it's not nearly as bad of an issue uh, because you don't have the same kind of um, uh, drag characteristics. All right. So from here, uh, all we've got left to do is wrap up some paint, uh, mostly because I got nothing else to do. Uh, I got the printer running in the background on a different project that we're gonna talk about soon once I have a large amount of parts printed. Uh, but the, the weather is turning. <laughs> we had snow south of us just earlier this week. They're calling for more snow tonight. It's 2022 and I still haven't flown this year. Uh, just because the weather has been absolutely atrocious between rain and wind, like really bad wind. We're talking like 25, 30 mile an hour wind. Uh, yeah, and I got a job too. <laughs> so we're going to do some painting, make sure this airplane looks like a proper Swedish airplane and just enjoy it a little bit on the ground before we enjoy it in the sky. Until next time, guys, keep working on your flying foam works of art.